Well, he said I added too much butter, so I'm taking some out. Don't worry, I got this covered, okay? <laughs> this is incredible. I'm a ding dong because I didn't half the recipe. Hey y'all, welcome back to our kitchen. So today I've got three awesome recipes to share with you. I am so excited because all of these are gonna be so simple, yet so delicious, and they all three involve a rotisserie chicken. I know everyone's really busy right now. It's the end of summer. You're gearing up for school, taking last minute vacations and all of that. And usually rotisserie chicken recipes are way less prep and way less time consuming. So I was like, now is the perfect time and y'all are going to love these so let's go ahead and get started on this first one So for this first recipe, we're actually gonna make this for lunch today, but you could totally have this for lunch or dinner. I think with like some roasted sweet potatoes, this would be so yummy for dinner. And I actually got the idea for this recipe from one of my very favorite cookbooks, and I will have this link down below, but it's The Living Table by Abby Turner. Y'all, such a great cookbook. So when I tell you my bunkie is going to be obsessed we're making like one of the most gourmet but easiest sandwiches ever. So to make this, you're gonna need of course a rotisserie chicken. You could honestly just do like sliced chicken from the deli or even turkey if you wanted to. And then we're gonna add some jalapeno pepper jelly. You can do whatever pepper jelly you want, but this is gonna be your powerhouse of flavor. Well, I say that, but also we're gonna add some pesto, which is of course another powerhouse of flavor. And we're gonna add bacon to ours because why not? With some brie and then some sourdough. And I did go ahead and get this in a full loaf. Because I feel like a sandwich that has all of this on there is gonna need like a piece of thick, crusty, good bread. Plus we're gonna melt it in the cast iron. So I didn't want anything that had like thin, pieces of bread. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I got the whole loaf so we can make it the size bread that we want. I was thinking with this, um, is it okay if I just have like the, the breast and then like slice it into like thin slices? That is exactly what I wanted you is to that, do. Okay. I didn't say it, but I was like, I'm going to tell him in a second to slice yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bonky. Great you minds know, think alike. You know I got my sandwich, <laughs> my sandwich heart ready to we go. We know. Mm -hmm. that my friends wow B you did good it's gorgeous <laughs> and this is for me oh I want a piece of that skin too <laughs> they don't know that um Daisy May's favorite food besides eggs and cheese it's is her cheese. history chicken <laughs> she's gonna start howling she will I better stop eating this in advance because the end result here is gonna be off the charts yes So should we do like long strips that'll be about that thick or should I go like with more of an artisan slice? Oh, whatever you, I wasn't even filming cause I was like so into what you're saying. Oh. <laughs> whatever you want to do. Oh, I think an artisan slice. Right, do we want them a little, not too thick, but about like that? That's perfect. <laughs> I just made that term up, artisan slice. I like it. She's already had her fill by the way. Daisy May. I have hooked her up. Woo, girlfriend. Okay, so now to my cast iron skillet, I'm just gonna add some butter and we're gonna kind of toast each side of the bread before we start assembling it with all of our other goodies. Monkey said I added too much butter, so I'm taking some out. <laughs> you know what I'm dying laughing about? What's that? I'm over here trying to like make this sandwich. Monkey, your collar is cracking me up. Uh oh. <laughs> I didn't notice that earlier, I forgot. That's funny. I'm over here trying to make this sandwich, but you are so particular about your sandwiches and you're honestly so good, and like you know what yeah. you like. Right. That you're like, sister, no. We can do this my way. Don't worry, I got this covered, okay? <laughs> so we're going in with the bread. Yeah, go ahead and add in your bread. I guess we'll just do one at a time. And then we're gonna toast it on both sides, and while it's toasting, I'm gonna go ahead and slice our brie. Mm. I say slice off just like this top little thing, you, but you do whatever you want. You can cut this. Yeah, cut that off a little bit. Razor, razor thin here. 
Oh, wow, that gets a little firm there and once you get into it, Bonk. Oh my goodness, do you see this beautifulness? Wow. I feel like we need to save this and then just like drop it in the cast iron. And let that melt? When we're done. Heck yes. So do you want me to try and go like uh... So you cut us just a couple of slices of this brie. <laughs> Oh, Bunky, that is absolute perfection. <laughs> if I have ever seen something that is absolute perfection. Oh, well, bottom got a little thick there, but that's okay. Is all this going on one sandwich? If you want it to, yes. That's gonna be a cheesy. Woo! All right, coming in hot here, coming in hot. Woo! Woo! That bread looks good. Should I, chop, should I cut this in half, you Yeah, think? I think so. Yeah, I used the back end of the knife to do that. <laughs> I did. Go down with the cheese? Yeah. Do you want your chicken and bacon first or do you want to put your condiments on first? We're going we're going condiments in direct contact with the cheese. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can like see that brie shining through underneath that jelly. Guess what we're going to do? Actually, next we're going chicken down okay. on top here, okay? Okay. Oh my gosh. Your mouth chats are going? They are seriously like going. Oh yes. Sneak you in over there. Oh, looky, looky, looky. This. Not too much pesto though, right? Yeah, pesto is very powerful. Okay. Your bacon, baby. Bacon, baby. <laughs> That's the most important part. Oh, tell them how we've been making our bacon. We've been baking our bacon. Bacon, bacon is the best way to make bacon. We agree. Easy cleanup. It comes out perfection every time. Uh, that's like the greatest benefit of it is the cleanup. It doesn't make a mess or splatter all over your oven. No. Nope. And it like melts in your mouth. It and is it's, so good. And it's such a nice even cook as yes. well. And you know what? You can do a whole package at one time. Mm -hmm. It's the best. We're gonna seal the deal here. Seal the deal. See, look with that placed on there. Yes. It's already <gasps> getting wow. softened up. Wow, 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 wow. Close the package. Okay, back Tran to the. Transfer the package back to the. Oh, yeah, that's gonna be hot. No, it cooled off. Actually, no, that, no, is, that's that is still very hot. We need to put a little more butter down. If you want to. I think so, just a smidgen again. Okay. I love Daisy Mae. She's like, my parents are crazy. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow, this is gonna be the best sandwich you've ever eaten. That is, uh, that's a tall order, Bunky, but I think it's gonna be up there. It's gonna be up there. It's gonna be way up there. Yes. If this sandwich is in the realm of the one that I had in Black Mountain, oh, North yeah. Carolina. We've told them about this. We recreated it. The turkey gravy. Mm -hmm. That thing was so good. <laughs> you know what? I have been thinking about Black Mountain yeah. so much lately. I want us to take like a little trip up there. That would be very fun. It would. What's it? What's Black Mountain near? What's the college? Montreat. Montreat, yeah. So if y'all are in that area, Go to the little town in Black Mountain. It's really yeah. great. And the sandwich shop is called what? Do you remember? Uh, I think it's called, is it called Veranda? Veranda. Veranda. Yeah. yeah. You just took a memory. Yeah. Everything that, or most everything I think that we've had to eat there because we've been there twice to cook. Is that where you get the cookies the from? The cookies. Oh man, yes. You love those cookies. Yeah. Very good. All right. Time to turn this bad okay, boy. Turn it, I turn think it. we need a spatula at this point. Y'all, this is gonna be amazing. Wowzers. All right, here goes, y'all. Okay. This was so simple to compose. Yes. And I think, just given all of the ingredients within, this is gonna be so good. Did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Savory, sweet, bacony, cheesy. That's like the best components of a sandwich ever. This is incredible. 
Yay, I'm so glad. Like y'all really need to recreate this at home because you probably already got pepper jellies at home. Somewhere. You could probably use most any kind of bread for this if you wanted to. Yeah, right? yeah. The brie you, you can get for really pesto. inexpensive at um, Aldi. Yeah. The pesto as well. Oh my gosh. The pepper jelly. Yeah, that makes it. It's really good. Okay, so is this like a top five sandwich for you? Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Y'all mm -hmm. know my monkey is like telling you the truth right now. This man loves this sandwich. This is so good. Oh, I'm so glad you love it. Okay, I'm about to get started making my sandwich because I want one of these so bad too since Funky is raving about it. But we will meet you guys back here in the kitchen tonight to get started on our second recipe. And I think this one's gonna be equally as good. Okay y'all, so I am back for this second recipe. We actually did not end up making this last night because it was so nice out, like such a good breeze. It has been so hot lately. So we ended up walking down to the Marsh Walk and having dinner down there. And I'm so glad that I did because I got to meet Liz and her husband, Jesse. So if you're watching this, I am so glad I got to hug your neck. You totally made my day. I love getting to see y'all out and about. So if you're ever in the inlet, and you see us, be sure you come up and say hello. But anyway, for the second recipe, we are making a pesto and chicken savory pie. It is gonna be so good and so easy. Now, I did not mean <laughs> to do two recipes with pesto in them, but here we are. Um, and this recipe is coming from that exact same cookbook. It is such a good one, so I will definitely link it for you guys. But let me flip you around and show you what ingredients we're gonna need to make these. Okay, so here it is in her cookbook, and you're gonna need some mozzarella, of course, some pesto. I went ahead and chopped up the rest of our rotisserie chicken. You'll need some spinach. Her recipe doesn't call for Parmesan, but y'all know us. <laughs> I'm gonna add it in. And then you'll need some little um, baby cherry tomatoes, some puff pastry, salt, pepper, and some Italian seasoning, that's it. So we're gonna make our mixture and then we'll go ahead and get our puff pastry cut into like little squares. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven to 400 and then we're gonna go ahead and just half these little cherry tomatoes. I think I'm actually gonna half them and then half them again because you want them to be bite size. Okay, so now into our bowl, we're gonna add our tomatoes and our rotisserie chicken as I make a humongous mess. And then a couple of big heaping tablespoons of pesto. About a cup of mozzarella cheese. And then like I said, I'm gonna add in just a little bit of Parmesan because I think that'll be really good. A crack of salt and pepper. And then one big handful of spinach. We're gonna toss this together. Okay, I'm gonna kind of tear up this spinach because it's pretty large. Okay, now we've got this all combined, let's go ahead and get started on our puff pastry. And I do wanna say about the puff pastry, so whenever you buy it, obviously you know it's in the freezer, so before you use it, you're gonna to wanna to let it sit out and thaw for a little bit, cause we're gonna like cut it into squares. Um, and it comes with like two sheets. Since it's just me and Bunky, I'm only gonna use one sheet because we don't need like 10 of these. But of course, if you have a larger family, then you would use both sheets of the puff pastry. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a pizza cutter and I'm gonna go kind of right down the center and then down the center again. So I'll get two little pies out of this. Okay, go ahead and prick the center of these with a fork. And then you're just gonna add your filling to each one of these and we'll pop the top on. Okay, take your fork and kind of crimp down these edges. Okay, so now we're gonna make our little egg wash that's gonna go over the top of these. I'm gonna add just a splash of water to this.
Okay, so once you've got your egg wash on there to the top of them, we're gonna add just a little bit of salt and pepper and then Italian seasoning, and then we'll bake them in the oven at 400 degrees for like 20 to 25 minutes until they are golden brown. Also, I do wanna mention, you wanna put these like on a non-stick baking sheet or like use your soap pad if you have one, or you could even do um, parchment paper. I'm over here like dying laughing because Bunky just walked downstairs and he's like, what is all of this? And I'm like, oh, that's my leftovers. Because you know how I told you I was only gonna use one sheet of puff pastry? Well, first of all, I went back and read the recipe and I think she cuts the one sheet into like six squares so you get three out of each puff pastry. But I did it where we only got two. So we're having like, you know, one big one each. Big pouches. Yes, but I'm a ding dong because I did it half the recipe. Oh. Like I only used half the puff pastry, but I didn't half the recipe and I'm like, wait, I have all of this left over. <laughs> well, whatever's in that bowl looks good enough to eat by itself. I was going to say, first of all, it smells so good because obviously pesto, you know? Yeah. And I put some Parmesan in there. But I was like, you know what? This would be just like a really good salad because it has spinach in there. Mm -hmm. Like if you use that as like your lettuce and then you think about it, you just have chicken, tomatoes mozzarella and parmesan yeah that's like a delicious salad yeah that looks good enough to eat just by itself yes yeah, so if you have leftovers y'all put this in a container and take it to work the next day for your lunch because it would be so good <laughs> or you could just make as many puff pastries as originally this is true intended <laughs> and then you could have the actual little pouches of of joy agreed but bunky these are going to be so good like i cannot wait and you know i was thinking too because there's little um tomatoes in there you know you you like love a warm tomato oh yeah b's gonna love this but oh my gosh it smells amazing well, i'm looking forward to it um, how much longer we got i had to check my timer but i think like 10 minutes okay perfect so not too much longer i'm getting hungry too do these not look amazing gorgeous they are like incredible i want to use puff pastry more often because I always am so impressed whenever I make a recipe that like uses that. Yeah, it's one of those things like we don't think about often enough. Yes. But when you do use it, you're like. And it's like flaky, buttery goodness. Yeah. Oh my gosh, y'all can't wait. Those but, look like calzones. I know, they're really big. Or stromboli. <laughs> but they're like adult hot pockets. Oh my gosh, you're right, that is. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to cut one open so we can like see the inside. All right. Okay. On this? Well, just don't cut my silk hat. <laughs> I can just see all that like flaky crust. Oh my gosh. Look at that steam escaping. Woo! I gotta see, I gotta see the inside. Oh, bunky. Oh. This looks love. so good. Are you gonna eat like a sandwich? <laughs> Oh yeah, I'm going in. You're taking a bite? This is that handheld pocket. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ma'am, that's that's awesome. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking too, mm. you could literally take this concept and do so many things. You could do like ham and cheese, you could do pizzas or yeah. all kinds of things. Yeah, this is awesome. You could do like rotisserie chicken and what if you did like um buffalo chicken? I knew that's what you're about to that's say. That's because I love buffalo chicken, but yes. Buffalo chicken dip would be good stuffed in here. Everything. Like, that is such a cool concept. Wow. The puff pastry deserves so much more love. <laughs> it's like so buttery and Yes, just... flaky. I mean, look at that texture. Wow. This thing is awesome. I love your little fork. Little forks. Yep. Okay, this is a winner, y'all. you got to try this recipe. It's very simple. Oh, that is so good. Okay, so now for this third recipe, I feel like I could not do a rotisserie chicken video without sharing, again, if you've been here for a while, you know it's like one of our favorite recipes, the barbecue chicken nachos. Y'all, Bunky and I used to have this like once a week at least, and it is still to this day one of our favorite recipes. So I'm gonna take you back to like maybe two years ago and share that recipe with you. But there are so many things you can do with rotisserie chicken. It saves time, it saves prep work, and it's always delicious. So let's get into this third recipe. All right, y'all, so tonight we are at the farm and we're actually gonna make some barbecue chicken nachos. I have made these before and you guys really like them. We have our chips here. This is just a shredded rotisserie chicken with some sweet baby rays. And then we have all of our toppings. We have some 
jalapenos, limes, cheese, sour cream, avocado. We have salsa verde, all kinds of different salsas, and then of course some cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the nachos and then we'll put them in the oven to bake. Okay, nachos are out of the oven. We did end up putting some of this buffalo wing sauce on them just because we didn't have any more barbecue sauce. But I think they're gonna be really yummy, kind of like sweet and spicy. And then once we get them on the plate, we'll go ahead and add our toppings and kind of make them how we want. But that's what's for dinner tonight. Okay, so that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us in the kitchen. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have a favorite rotisserie chicken recipe, tell us what it is down below in the comments. As always, I would love for you guys to subscribe, give this one a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye, y'all.